fra gli ospiti internazionali della sesta festa di scienze e filosofia di Foligno c'era anche il cosmologo inglese John Barrow. Lo abbiamo intervistato poco prima del suo intervento nella sala rossa di Palazzo Trinci. Okay. Professor Barrow, uh, your talk, the title of your talk, may be considered the question of the questions. What do you want to know about uh, the universe? But what's the current uh, answer? to this question uh, by the current uh, astronomy, since we know only 5% of this universe. Yes, we, the biggest unsolved problem is to try to understand what is the reason for the acceleration of the universe. So uh, we need to know more things than just what it's made of, but how the things that we see are moving. And we know that the observed galaxies are accelerating in their expansion and we have a good description of how that occurs. But we don't really understand at all what is the type of matter or energy which is driving that acceleration. And cosmologists call this unknown type of energy dark energy. We can map its behavior very carefully, but we don't know at the level of particle physics or the quantum theory of gravity uh, why this type of energy comes into play in the universe when it's about 75% of its present expanded size. So why then? Why does the universe change gear and start accelerating at that moment in cosmic history? Um, and just a second question. Um, we recently discovered for the first time the gravitational waves. Yes. That is open up a new window in the astronomy. What, in your opinion, this uh, uh, discovery could bring to the knowing of the universe, of the, our current vision of the universe? Well, the, what was discovered um, back last September was uh, the gravitational waves emitted by the collision of two large black holes, rotating black holes, about 30 times the mass of our sun. And I suspect that the observers have found other examples, uh, probably not so dramatic as that one. And this will be telling us about what sorts of objects inhabit our galaxy and the universe beyond, um, these very massive stars that have come about. There will also be a background in the universe of all the gravitational waves from these events happening everywhere. And eventually there will be an astronomy of this background gravitational radiation. We also wonder, it is possible for gravitational waves to be produced near the beginning of the universe. So not from the collision of rotating black holes and massive stars. And this would carry with it information, new information, about conditions during the first moments of the universe. But this is very difficult to detect because the signature of this type of gravitational radiation tends to be confused by the dust in our galaxy. Uh, and when we try to look at the effect of the gravitational waves on the radiation coming towards us, the gravitational waves have the same effect as scattering by dust between the stars. So this is a challenge for the future. There are observatories at the South Pole who can measure this type of effect on radiation from gravitational waves. But I suspect in the near future we will see more detections of colliding black holes and similar objects in our galaxy. And we will have a new astronomy of dead stars, really, a gravitational astronomy. This uh, collision between the two rotating black holes, I think we don't expect there to be very much observational uh, evidence from ordinary radiation. The uh, in-spiralling, as it's called, of the two black holes happens over a time scale that is longer uh, than the time needed for the black holes to swallow all the other radiation that's produced. So we expect the black holes to have swallowed all the X-rays and gamma rays and so forth, and we will not see a big mess of an exploding uh, scenario in the sky to match up to the gravitational waves. But so far we don't know where this merger is, 
the two detectors we have can't pin down the location of the event uh, in the sky. But in the summer, the uh, European part of this collaboration will uh, open another detector. Um, sorry, Italian the, one. The Torino uh, group, yes. And with this third detector, we will be able to pinpoint in the sky where future events occur. So this will be an important new advance. And we'll be able to see if there is any other observational signature accompanying the gravitational waves from a particular merger event. <laughs>